Good evening, I'm Emily Flores. And I'm Glenn Mills. Thanks so much for joining us. We do begin with breaking news. We're learning new details about the woman who died in a fire inside a storage unit. This right here is 27-year-old Morgan K. Harris. Police say her boyfriend, 30-year-old Alexander Wardell, admitted to locking her inside a storage unit around 5 p.m. Saturday along with her dog, Huck. Now, a fire started inside, and by the time first responders got there, they say it was too late. Her family releasing a statement tonight and asking for privacy. This is what they're saying as she just started a new job in Draper. Quote, she was always known for her sweet, shy, and kind temperament, being a deep thinker with amazing artistic abilities and always having an infectious giggle. Now, Wardell is in police custody awaiting charges. The cause of the fire remains under investigation tonight. All right, now switching together, uh, switching gear to a weather alert. A blast of winter is on its way. Yeah, get ready for that. Storms expected to bring snow to our mountains and valleys as soon as tomorrow. Now check out this video of UDOT posting on Twitter yesterday. Plow drivers clearing snow in big and little Cottonwood Canyons. Now we just got a light dusting of the fluffy stuff this morning, but that is just a sneak peek of what's to come. And we are following these storms with team coverage tonight. The storm expected to leave Utah covered in the greatest snow on Earth. ABC4 meteorologist Nate Larson out at the base of Little Cottonwood Canyon tonight where conditions could mean a tricky trip up the mountain or even possibly blocking that trip from happening at all. Yes, but first let's head over to our chief meteorologist Alana Brophy who is tracking the predicted totals from the pinpoint weather porch. And Alana, it doesn't feel like a winter storm is just to head out there now, but we know the weather can change real quick. It is going to change. It's the warm before the storm as temperatures sit in the upper 40s along the Wasatch Front, but we're going to see tricky travel throughout Utah, and this includes our valleys. We're going to take that live look at Alto where you can see the cloud cover that has moved in. Busy day and this is one of the spots that we're going to be measuring snow in feet, not just inches. Now today, pretty quiet conditions for your President's Day afternoon and evening with that deck of clouds sliding into central and southern Utah. Cloud cover will keep us fairly mild for the overnight. It's 49 degrees in Salt Lake, low 60s in St. George and 30s and 40s throughout the rest of the state. It feels pretty mild out there, but that is going to change. This time tomorrow, we're going to be dealing with sloppy commute conditions and as a result many of the roads will be slushy snow covered or wet so you can take a look I-15 will be impacted at this time tomorrow giving you that heads up for your Tuesday evening commute now we do anticipate that we will see heavy snow from this storm system it's why we've got winter storm warnings in pink posted throughout the state winter weather advisories in purple it's not just snow the wind is coming and those two put together will crank up that avalanche danger so we know this storm system getting ready to impact us. This could be the most significant storm of the season. We will be tracking it and keeping you posted as all of the information becomes available. Those are new updated warnings. More to come with this system. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, Alana, thanks for staying on top of it. Well, as we look ahead to one of the biggest storms, as Alana just made mention of, this going on through Thursday, potentially, where feet of new snow is expected in our mountain areas. ABC4 meteorologist Nate Larson looking at how UDOT and some of the ski resorts are preparing for this next winter storm. He's live at the base of Little Cottonwood Canyon. Nate. Yeah, Glenn and Emily, we know that uh, heavy snows in the forecast. Alana just mentioned it and road conditions. They're really going to deteriorate rather quickly, especially up the canyon areas. We know UDOT works hard to keep the roads clear, keep travel safe for skiers and snowboarders trying to get up and down the canyon. But with heavy snowfall like this, it's going to have an impact, uh, particularly to avalanche conditions as Little Cottonwood Canyon is prone to avalanches, uh, typically caused uh, by UDOT as they're trying to prevent those with avalanche mitigation. So plan on uh, some delays as you're heading out and about with the storm as it takes place. And even for ski resorts, avalanche danger is going to increase throughout the duration of the storm. We have to do everything that we can in, in the canyon areas to make sure that those roads are, are safe. And that means, if that means closing it down so that we can do the avalanche control work and bring those uh, slides down under, under our watch while there's no traffic moving through there, that's, that's what we have to do. 
So if you are heading, uh, uh, planning on heading out, uh, maybe up Little or Big Cottonwood Canyon to catch some of the fresh snow that's going to be falling down, uh, UDOT just asked that you're prepared to be out on the roads. Make sure your tires aren't bald on your vehicle. Your vehicle's got proper tires on it, snow uh, chains or chains for the vehicle as well. And, of course, the traction law here up in the Cottonwood Canyons typically goes into effect, and that means you need four-wheel drive and traction control and chains if you don't have four-wheel drive for your vehicle as you head out. You can always find the latest updates. Uh, by checking the ski resort websites. They're usually great on updating on road conditions as well as UDOT's uh, Twitter site or even their Facebook. They have a Cottonwood Canyon uh, Facebook or Twitter uh, handle that you can follow as well uh, to keep you safe before you head out on the roads. Live at the mouth of Little Cottonwood Canyon, Nate Larson, ABC4 News. Nate, thank you. NBA All-Star Weekend may be over, but NBA legends Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal have stirred the pot, calling Salt Lake a, a boring city. And in response, city officials are asking the two to be better. ABC4's uh, Annika Johns joining us live with what Utah leaders are saying to the two All-Stars. Annika? That's right, Emily. So All-Star Weekend at that big game, uh, Barkley was heard saying that all Utahns would go to heaven because there's nothing to do here in Utah. Shaquille O'Neal responded to that comment saying that he's never eaten so much room service in his life, implying that he never left his hotel room during the weekend. Now in response, Mayor Mendenhall responded in a tweet calling out both former NBA players saying that they clearly need a local to show them around. She invited the two back saying she'd be more than happy to show them any of the world famous restaurants, bars and outdoor spaces they may have missed. Senator Nate Blowman also re replied to their comments asking for the two to do better. As someone who represents a big chunk of the area, a big a lot of Salt Lake County and, and Salt Lake City and some of the other uh, uh, cities in the area, I think it, it's frustrating to see this continued perception of Utah as a, you know, a place where you where you can't smoke or can't drink. When speaking to Senator Bluen, he said that while Utah isn't like other major cities with a large nightlife, there is a lot more to Utah for people to enjoy. There's plenty to see, whether it's in Salt Lake City itself or, or in the, the very nearby areas. And um, it's a shame if people just come in and, and jet out and don't get to see that. Ryan Smith, the owner of the Utah Jazz, also responded to their commentary saying not to believe them and that Charles probably spends majority of his time back home in Atlanta ordering three meals a day. When we asked uh, Smith for a further comment, he told us that um, not to believe them and that, <laughs> my apologies, reporting live from Salt Lake City, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. Thank you, Annika. New at 5, two University of Utah employer, uh, employees booked for bagging NBA All-Star merchandise. According to police, surveillance video catching Daniel Martinez and Giovanni Rodriguez in a secure area stashing memorabilia, uh, memorabilia into uh, bags belonging to the NBA. Now, police say they found the bags and the alleged thieves then admitted they had more in their cars. They were booked for felony burglary, stealing items valued over $1,500. And the parents of a missing loosened man speaking out about their son's case, and they're optimistic that the break they've been praying for could come soon. 20-year-old Dylan Rounds disappeared over Memorial Day weekend from his, his farm in Box Elder County. Since then, police have named two suspects. Police say they both interacted with Rounds in the days before he was last heard from and have unrelated charges for gun crimes in Utah. But neither are charged in Rounds' case. His parents say they are more confident than in authorities now that the FBI is involved. From the first two months that we were out there that we were the ones out there finding everything, we were the ones out there doing, and now there's stuff that's been processed and found that we don't know about, so that is kind of let you take a deep breath and feel like we don't have to play investigator right now. In a few months, it will be a year since Dylan Rounds was last seen. But for his parents, the possibility they will never talk to their son again is still, they say, impossible to digest. In international news, as the one-year anniversary of Russia's attack on Ukraine nears, President Biden making a surprise visit to the war-torn country. Washington correspondent Alexander Lamone has the details. President Biden said his visit to Kyiv was meant to show public solidarity with Ukraine, but it also showed defiance toward Russia. 
And I'm here to show our unwavering support for the nation's independence. In remarks delivered from Kyiv, President Biden criticized Russia's attacks on everything from orphanages to schools. It's barbaric. The president said he felt it was important for him to be in Ukraine as the war nears its one-year anniversary. I thought it was critical that there would not be any doubt, none whatsoever, about U.S. support for Ukraine. President Zelensky thanked President Biden, the U.S., and other allies for the support to Ukraine in the battle to keep its independence and said the fight must go on. To continue doing everything possible so that the democratic world would win in this historic fight. The State Department also announced $460 million in previously approved aid to Ukraine will now be distributed. That'll include missile, tank, and air surveillance systems. And we hope that this year, the 2023, will become a year of victory, this unprovoked and criminal Russia's war against Ukraine. The United States will also provide other emergency assistance the State Department says is necessary to protect Ukrainian infrastructure. President Biden told Zelensky, there's significant support for Ukraine in Congress, and Democratic Senator Richard Durbin agrees. They're fighting for our values, and I'm happy to be on their side. Despite that wide support for Ukraine, there are some Republicans in Congress who oppose giving more money to Ukraine, saying the U.S. is already facing too much debt. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Thank you, Alexandra. Still ahead, imagine if you had someone to shovel your snow on call and getting them to your driveway is, was as easy as calling an Uber. We're going to tell you about how this may be reality in just a few moments. You don't just call your husband? I didn't know. I wasn't sure. Okay, live look from St. George. Temperatures in the low 60s. We've got sunshine. We've got cloud cover, but major changes on the way with a significant winter storm that's going to pack a wintry punch statewide. The timing in Utah's most accurate forecast.